Hi, my name is Alicia Jeffrey Thomas. I'm a physical therapist here at Greater Boston Neurology. I kind of fell into physical therapy accidentally, but um, I realized that I wanted to go into pelvic floor rehab when I was working in a um, research lab in undergrad, and I ended up helping out with a chronic pelvic pain study, and so that population really stood out to me as an area where people really needed help. Interstitial cystitis is a chronic inflammatory condition um, that affects you know, the bladder, it affects the pelvic floor muscles, it affects the nerves and the fascia and everything kind of in the, in the pelvic region. Um, it can cause things like um, urgency and frequency of urination, it can cause bladder pain, lower abdominal pain, it can lead to things like lower back pain or pain with sex or um, you know, different things that can be really debilitating to a person's life. I see can affect people throughout the um, age spectrum. Um, I'll see people as young as 18, I'll see people well into their 60s and 70s that have um, the same kinds of symptoms. Usually um, they present, again, like I said, with those symptoms of bladder pain or urgency and frequency. Um, and if they do a pelvic exam, they'll notice that their pelvic floor muscles are really tight or clenched up and they're not um, able to contract and relax appropriately. A lot of times you hear people say, oh, if you have a pelvic floor condition, just do Kegels. And that's really kind of a common misconception, um, particularly when you have a pelvic pain condition associated with um, bladder frequency and urgency. You don't want to be doing um, Kegel exercise sizes that can actually make things worse. If you think about your pelvic floor muscles as a voluntary muscle, so they're like your bicep muscle or the muscles that would make a fist in your hand, if um, think about those muscles as constantly being held and you can't do the things that you want to do um, if your muscles are constantly clenched. So normally they should be able to contract and relax normally to allow for bowel and bladder function to um, you know, hold up your organs to, to send the right signals to your brain and, and with IC and with pelvic floor dysfunction, that doesn't happen the way that it should. When we assess a patient, um, we're doing an external screen and we're also doing an internal exam um, to look at not only the pelvic floor muscles, but everything that could have possibly kind of tightened up as a result of it. So we look at, you know, the muscles in your glutes and in your abdomen um, to kind of see where we need to start to work on, on normalizing muscle tone. Um, I'm primarily focused on, you know, kind of relaxing and, and stretching and lengthening these muscles back out so that they can, they can work appropriately. So we'll do different manual therapy techniques, we'll have them do stretches, we'll have them do different relaxation exercises um, to try to get things to be how they should be. The American Urological Association has actually given pelvic floor physical therapy um, an evidence grade of A, meaning that it should be in the first line of treatment for um, interstitial cystitis. That really varies on the individual, um, depending on the pelvic floor dysfunction, um, depending on the chronicity of it um, and, and how severe it is. You know, you can have people that will start to see results within a couple of visits. You have people that take a lot longer to start um, feeling relief. But, you know, generally, I would say within, you know, six visits or so, you should start to see some improvement and know that we're headed in the right direction. One of the greatest things about working in this field is that you can impact someone's life in an area that they were kind of not talking about before. You know, they were having, um, you know, constantly running to the bathroom. They were um, avoiding sex because it was painful. They were having really severe constipation issues or, or different things like that that are, are kind of taboo to talk about in today's society. And so, you know, to get that feedback from a patient to say that they were able to do these things without pain, um, without feeling that, that social stigma is, is really, really super rewarding.